What's cracking guys, Omar Esau here back with another video. In this video today, I got a special guest. I got Eric Helms on the channel going in depth all about creatine. It's over 15 minutes long, so sit down, enjoy yourself. Uh, he's going to discuss, like I said, everything to do with creatine. What is it? What are the benefits? Why do people take it? Loading, is that necessary? The interactions between creatine and caffeine, uh, bloating, water bloat that people experience. What is it? Why does it occur? And just in general, some of the myths about creatine. I made a video in the past, but it honestly is pretty basic. It was maybe five to six minutes long. This video is over 15 minutes long of Eric just going in all about creatine. So if you like this video, like this type of content, make sure to like the damn video and also post below what you want to see Eric talk about next. It could be nutrition, it could be training, anything, but he has a wealth of knowledge. He's a damn walking encyclopedia of uh, this stuff, and I think that's very important to try and promote good information because honestly, there's so much misinformation out there, and a lot of it comes, as Eric will explain, from supplement companies trying to get you to buy things or buy separate ingredients or whatever to jack up the prices. Without further ado, I'll let Eric do the talking. What's going on everyone, Eric Helms here. Happy to be back on Omar's channel here from 3D Muscle Journey. And today we're gonna to be talking about creatine. The supplement creatine, probably the most studied uh, sports supplement to date. There are over 700 human research studies uh, on this uh, supplement. And for that reason, we often think we know everything there is to know about it. Uh, but today we're gonna to talk about how it works why it works and some of the uh, logic behind it so we understand exactly really what it does and we're going to talk about some of the lingering controversies that still exist surrounding creatine. So to get us all of us on the same page let's talk about the basics of creatine. Okay so creatine is already present in our bodies it is a, uh, a fuel source for a lot of tissues in our body not just muscles and uh, our body makes it on a daily basis all the time. Okay, so it's not we're like we're taking an herbal supplement or a foreign drug uh, that doesn't exist in our bodies. This is something we already have. So you're probably wondering, well, hold on, then, then why would I even supplement with it uh, if I already have plenty in, in my body? Well, the reason being is that uh, while we do get creatine in our diets, as you can imagine, if humans make it in their body, so do animals, right? Um, so just because we get in our diet doesn't mean we get enough to actually give us a uh, performance boost in terms of uh, supplemental levels. It's very difficult to achieve that from diet alone. So if you are a vegan, you're getting no creatine in your diet because it is only present in animal products. If you're, let's say, a vegetarian but who still consumes, say, eggs and dairy, you're getting a very small amount in dairy, some in eggs, uh, but still probably not getting enough in your diet. So you're probably thinking, okay, well, if I eat meat, is that enough? Actually, no, because the cooking process actually degrades the creatine content of meat. Uh, in reality, to just get the standard maintenance dose of five grams, you would need to eat about a kilo, a kilo, a full kilogram, or slightly over two pounds of raw beef every day to get five grams of creatine in your diet. So not only is that practically uh, not feasible, uh, it's also extremely costly and potentially dangerous to eat that much raw meat on a regular basis. So it would cost you a ton of money, uh, be unsafe, and would result in a very strange diet that probably wouldn't be very fun for most people, okay? So that's why we supplement with creatine, why we recommend uh, creatine supplementation to get the effects of creatine. Now, like I said, creatine is present uh, throughout the body. It's not just used in muscle cells. Today, we're gonna to be predominantly talking about the benefits for performance and body composition for people who lift weights, uh, but it does have effects in other places. In fact, uh, if you supplement people who have cognitive decline or uh, neurological disorders with creatine, it can actually help them as well. Um, and people who are vegetarian and vegan sometimes get benefits for cognitive performance as well. So you can be deficient in creatine or have low enough levels that it actually has a measurable impact on you outside of like muscular performance, okay? Uh, so what is creatine and, and, and what does it do? Well, you've probably heard of different energy systems in our body. Perhaps you've heard that there's an aerobic uh, set of energy systems, anaerobic, and then also uh, our very fast, high intensity system uh, known fo as phosphocreatine or the ATP-CP, uh, creatine phosphate, is what CP stands for, system. Um, the best way to think about how our body performs work is to think of it in terms of sustainability and availability, okay? 
So for very high intensity activities, like if I started sprinting right now, uh, you know intuitively that I couldn't maintain that intensity of work for a long period. Uh, I need a high amount of energy immediately. And that's basically what creatine, the ATP-CP system does. It gives you energy very fast. However, uh, it's not a very efficient at making a lot of energy. So it gives you energy immediately, but it runs out quickly, which is why you can't just keep sprinting forever. Okay, uh, so that is why weightlifters, bodybuilders, powerlifters, and other uh, anaerobic athletes uh, take creatine because it gives them a boost in the uh, energy system that they use the most. Okay, so uh, that's why we take creatine, and that's where the vast majority of the performance enhancing effects come from. Uh, to get an idea of how much of a benefit you can get as someone who lifts weights, there's been a number of meta-analyses, which if you remember from my previous videos, is a collection of studies looking at the overarching findings. Uh, we know uh, that not only does creatine improve like 30 second and less uh, bouts of, of activity, but also moderate and even moderately long activity. So in one meta-analysis, uh, they found that in terms of the maximal amount of weight you could put on the bar for either a one, five, three, or 10 rep max, you're looking at about an 8% increase. And then in terms of how many reps you can do at a given load, uh, you're looking at about a 14% increase in the number of repetitions you can do. Now this is the average, and this is not like immediate. This is over the course of these studies. So studies typically last anywhere between six to 24 weeks. So this is like the average length study, the average gain for the average person. But you might be anywhere, say, uh, half of that to one and a half times that on average. And some people don't seem to respond as well. Others do respond better. So your mileage will vary. Um, Another, another way of looking at the performance gain in weightlifting, there was another study that looked at gains in 1RM in the squat and the bench press. Again, this is average over the average length of all these different uh, training st studies, but they found that compared to just lifting weights and not taking creatine, uh, you could expect, say, about a 15 pound increase or about seven kilos in your bench press and about a nine to 10 kilo increase in your squat or about 20 pounds, okay? Now, this isn't cumulative. That doesn't mean that every say eight to 16 weeks, you'll see an additional 15 pounds or we'd all be freaking monsters for taking creatine. What it does mean though, is that that first time you take creatine, you'll see that benefit and you'll sustain it. Uh, now, when you think about it over like a 10 year span, an additional you know, 15 or 20 pounds on the lift isn't much, but I'm sure we'd all take it, okay? I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't deny an extra 15 pounds on my bench press. We're getting there a little bit earlier, okay? I personally have been taking creatine since 2004, pretty much nonstop which segues into how it's taken. Okay, so you've probably heard of creatine loading, all right? Um, a lot of studies on creatine are done on a process called creatine loading. So the way creatine works in the body, like I said, it's already there. And the beneficial effects and performance come from having a high level of muscle creatine content, okay? So if you, did, you were to take the standard maintenance dose of about three to five grams per day, it would take about two to four weeks to get you to the point where you're getting a beneficial effect from taking creatine, okay? However, if you take five or six days of taking roughly 20 to 30 grams of creatine, or about 0.3 grams per kg uh, per day, for five or six days, you could get there within five or six days, okay? That's what the, the loading process is. Now, in my opinion, considering this isn't a drug, it's not something you need to cycle on or cycle off or stop taking, uh, just like you wouldn't cycle off taking chicken because it's present in meat, it's present in our bodies, it's just a nutrient, uh, there's no need to load creatine, okay? Um, because that's only going to be affecting a one or two week period over the span of your entire lifting career. Think about it. So you get your muscle creatine levels there one or two weeks earlier. Does it really make any kind of big difference in the grand scheme? No, it's pretty much negligible. Uh, the creatine loading phase can be useful for research studies. If you can only get participants to come in to uh, perform research with you over a one week period, then you can load them over five days and see the effect after six days and not have that intermingled with the training effect of multiple weeks of lifting weights. You can just see, okay, what's well, just the effect of loading creatine on their baseline performance, boom. And there's a lot of studies like that. So it's useful for research, but in my opinion, not necessary. And actually it's a little cost inefficient in practical use. Because if you think about it, if you're taking say, oh, 25 grams over six days, that's 150 grams of creatine, or 30 grams over five days, you're taking about roughly 150 grams of creatine over a less than one week period. Versus if you're taking a maintenance dose of three to five grams over say three weeks to get to the same point, you're only taking 100 grams. So you're getting there one, two weeks early and taking in about 
50% more creatine. So you're really just wasting your creatine a little bit faster for this marginal time period that you're gonna forget even a few months later, okay? So is loading beneficial? Barely. Is it necessary? Definitely not. Um, however, it is often exploited by supplement companies in advertising. There are some ways to make the loading, fast, loading phase more efficient, whether that's adding more uh, adding ALA to it, which is another supplement, or adding carbohydrates, or changing the form of creatine. All these different manipulations of creatine do two things. One, they may allow you to, to get your muscle creatine levels there a little bit earlier. We're talking hours or days in some cases. Uh, but B, they allow them to charge a whole lot more for creatine. But in the end, just regular high quality creatine monohydrate within three weeks of taking five grams a day, you're gonna be at, at maxed out levels. And from that point on, the only reason you're taking it is just to basically keep your gas tank topped off, okay? And you will continue to get that performance beneficial effect. So in my opinion, no need to load no need to buy any of the fancy types. In fact, a few studies on some of the modified versions of, of creatine have showed they're actually worse than creatine monohydrate. Uh, just stick with the basics and uh, don't buy into the hype, okay? So that's the, uh, the deal on loading, that's the deal on performance. What about body composition? Well, just like when you carbohydrate load and you increase your muscle glycogen content, it comes with a lot of water. Like if you have a big carbohydrate rich meal or even a couple days, you'll see your weight go up but you won't necessarily look like you've gained a lot of body fat. And that's because you haven't. And this is what bodybuilders do before getting on stage. They carb load. Creatine has the same effect. It pulls a similar amount of water with it for every gram of creatine stored in the muscle. And in fact, if you look at the fiber level, it, loading creatine or taking creatine does increase fiber diameter. And that's because the muscle is actually more hydrated. And this will actually create a cascade of increasing uh, the rate of muscle growth because it stretches the cell a little bit, you get some muscle hydration, uh, and that can influence growth. But I would say probably the primary reason you will see gains in lean mass from taking creatine is because your performance is improved and you can use heavier loads and uh, greater volumes of, of work in your training, which will help you gain muscle more efficiently. Okay. Uh, now, you can gain a significant amount of weight in a short period from taking creatine. We're talking sometimes two to four pounds or one to two kilograms on average. Uh, but this is predominantly water weight. And for those bodybuilders out there worrying about uh, is water weight a bad thing because that typical mentality of cutting water before a competition. Remember, this is intracellular water within the muscle cell. I wouldn't advise like loading creatine because creatine does have a propensity to draw water to it. Uh, but taking your regular maintenance dose, even on competition day, absolutely nothing wrong with it. It can't do you any harm. In fact, it takes while it takes three weeks of loading, uh, or sorry, taking a maintenance dose of creatine to get up to creatine levels, uh, high levels in your body, it takes just as long for those levels to come back to normal. So even skipping, let's say, the entire peak week of taking creatine, you're still going to be at pretty high levels of creatine on comp day. So it's not going to make much of a difference. Um, not worth doing and you actually don't want muscle creatine levels to fall below normal because that'll actually reduce the size of your muscle cells because there's less hydration. So it's a good kind of hydration. Now what you don't want to do though is load creatine or take a large amount, say 10 grams to 30 grams and not drink enough water because the water will be drawn with the intestine and it can create stomach cramping or bloating or even diarrhea. That's probably the most commonly reported side effect but this can be very easily uh, avoided by not taking too high of doses, not doing the loading as I mentioned prior, and drinking enough water or even increasing your water intake once you start taking creatine. Okay, so the final thing I want to talk about is the creatine caffeine interaction. You may or may not heard of this but it is common lore uh, that those two compounds interact with each other and maybe one prevents the effect of the other or you can only get the benefit of one at a time. Now this isn't just total bro science, um, but I will explain to you why I think it's not something to worry about. There was a study done in 1996 uh, where they had people do um, muscular contractions on an isokinetic dynamometer, which is basically like a laboratory weight training machine okay, that controls the tempo of lifting. Uh, and they did that before a, a creatine loading period and afterwards. And then they compared that creatine loading group to a group that just took placebo. So nothing, uh, or they took something, they, did, they, didn't, they didn't know it was nothing, and another group that took caffeine with their creatine. Now interestingly enough, the researchers of this study did this study because they had a hypothesis that the caffeine would actually improve the effectiveness of creatine, and they had a physiological reason to explain that. 
uh, and they had a group of only nine people, so this is a pretty low-powered study, which means it increases uh, the risk of, of the findings being due to chance rather than the actual variables they control. So they had these nine individuals go through this process, and they saw how they did with creatine and caffeine, uh, just creatine or nothing, and they found that only the creatine and caffeine group uh, had improved performance. So they concluded that somehow the interaction of creatine and caffeine reduced the ergogenic benefits of creatine to the point where it was the same as placebo. Now, interestingly enough, in the discussion, they couldn't explain why. They basically had no, no rationale. It was the exact opposite findings that they expected. Now, this isn't enough in my mind to dismiss the study. What really is, though, is the follow-up studies that have been done in, this, in the subsequent years. So to date, we now have three studies that found basically the exact opposite in varying types of exercise. So I wouldn't just dismiss a study out of hand based on the fact that it had a low sample size or the findings didn't really make sense and the researchers couldn't explain it. But when you have that and you have three times as many contradicting studies, that's when you start to have to question whether that might have just been a statistical error or some other confounding variable that the researchers weren't aware of in the first study. To sum it all up, creatine, creatine and caffeine can be taken together. Probably not something we need to worry about. Would more research be nice? Sure, but right now I'd say we have a three to one ratio and a logical rationale of evidence supporting the fact that creatine and caffeine taken together can actually be beneficial and synergistic. Um, creatine is already produced in the body. There's no, re no, no, reason, to, no reason to cycle it. Uh, no reason to take any kind of expensive or alter alternative forms of it. Uh, and it's a little bit inefficient to take uh, a loading phase, uh, you know, 25, 30 grams a day for five to six days. It's more likely to cause stomach cramping. Uh, you're just gonna use more of your creatine up quickly. And it's cheap anyway, so, anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, and it will most likely benefit your strength and your uh, muscular endurance and potentially result in uh, beneficial effects for your body composition. Uh, and it's probably a good idea, especially if you are a vegan or vegetarian to take it because you might have lower than normal levels. Uh, and also creatine is not made from animal products. So if you're concerned about whether or not your creatine supplement is vegetarian, it is almost always made synthetically in the laboratory. So no reason to worry about it there. So up to you if you want to take it or not, but at least now you're fully informed. If you want more information, I would highly advise checking out examine.com. They've got a great summary of all the research. And thank you again for your time. I'll talk to you next time. Eric Helm signing out. Well guys, that is the video. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you liked the video, make sure to like the damn video. And my thanks for Eric Helms for being on the channel and just dropping all this good knowledge. His social media links will be in the description. And finally, last thing I want to say, his Muscle and Strength Pyramid books, which are a great resource for any lifter. Uh, he currently has a sale. I'm going to link that in the description for those curious that want to kind of increase their overall knowledge. Uh, I think they're a great investment. That's it. I'll be seeing all you guys, my rascals, in that next video. Peace. Eat your vegetables, eat your vegetables, eat your fucking vegetables.